now. So welcome to our next session of our equine management series. Uh, for this session, we're going to be covering senior geriatric course nutrition, and we have our special guest speaker, our UT equine specialist, Dr. Jenny Ivey, is going to help us wade through the waters of this uh, complicated topic and try to prepare us uh, as we come upon the cooler months of the year. So Dr. Ivey, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Matt. I'm glad to be back here with everyone today. Um, and so the senior geriatric side of nutrition is definitely one that I get a lot of questions on. Um, and this is probably is the case for a couple different reasons. Um, the first is that we know our horses are living a little bit longer. So we've got a benefit of, you know, some better health and some better nutrition. And we're kind of removing some of those factors that horses face in the wild. Um, and so in our, our regular management settings, it's not uncommon for us to see horses that are living um, 30s almost into their 40s or older sometimes. Um, so it poses some unique nutrition questions and some different things that we need to consider while trying to formulate rations for these horses. And so today we're going to go through kind of just some changes that happen to the horses physiology as they get older. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about some feeding considerations and then some general dietary recommendations in more of a scenario type setting. Um, and then I'm glad to answer any questions that you all have. Or if as I'm going through you, you think of something, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, I'm, I'm here to help. So when we think about um, what happens to your horse as they get older, the one of the first things that always pops into my mind is what is the condition of their teeth? Right? So we know that horses have kind of this really deep um, tooth that goes in and we have this kind of in reserve throughout the horse's lifetime. And those teeth continually erupt through the horse's gum and they get worn down as the horse chews throughout their lifetime. And so eventually what happens is that horses can sometimes just get old enough that they literally just run out of teeth. Um, and so we're seeing this, like I said, more and more as our horses get older. Um, but also sometimes what we have is that there's maybe just damage to horses' teeth, um, or maybe they, you know, kind of had a poor mouth throughout most of their lifetime, and so they don't really have a great surface for chewing. And so the condition of your horse's teeth is one of the biggest factors in their ability to eat. Um, and this is across the board for a variety of different feedstuffs. But we really want to make sure that as we think about how to feed our senior horses, we look at the condition of their teeth. Okay, and this ability for their horse's teeth to wear is actually what allows us to be able to age them or get a rough estimation as to how old your horse actually is. So that phrase of don't look a gift horse in the mouth actually has some meaning because they're talking about being able to guess the horse's age based on the wear of the tooth. And so I kind of like this picture up here um, to the right hand side that shows us um, how if we took a cross section and think about you know, maybe a couple of years when the horse's tooth surface is right where this blue line is, it would look something like this. And then as we move down, right, we'd be able to maybe see that in a few more years, maybe the surface would look something similar to this. And then as all of this tooth gets worn down, maybe in another 10 years or so, we would see that the surface would look more like this. And you can tell that the shape and the style of that tooth is changing dramatically. So that's what we're looking for when we age horses, specifically on their incisors. And so why we care about this with regard to your senior horse, okay, is I want you to think about how your horse actually eats, okay? And there's some specific things that I would encourage you to look for, okay? Um, one is, does your horse bolt his food? Okay, so is your horse really chewing, especially on the concentrate or the grain side, or are they literally just taking it in and kind of swallowing it whole? Um, does your horse quid? So I have a picture of quitting on a couple slides um, forward here, but quitting basically is when maybe there's a, a tooth that's missing or something that's kind of misaligned in your horse's mouth, and as they're chewing that forage usually, um, it kind of rolls into this really kind of packed little log and they fall out of your horse's mouth. So if you're seeing a lot of these maybe in your horse's stall or around the pasture where your horse will eat very often, it's usually a good indicator that something's wrong with their dentition. Um, same thing with a head tip or a head tilt. So if your horse kind of takes a bite of food and then turns its head to the side to chew, and maybe because they're trying to put that food in a specific alignment that is either more comfortable or more efficient for them to chew. 
Um, bad breath and nasal discharge. So both of these are usually an indicator that there might be an infection, either in your horse's teeth or up in the nasal cavity from maybe back up in that root. Um, but if you walk up to your horse and as they chew or maybe as they open their mouth, you just get this overwhelming stench, it's probably a good time to call your veterinarian. And same thing if your horse has a lot of nasal discharge. Um, there was a horse that I had worked with back at Rutgers when I was working on my undergraduate degree that just had this chronic um, nasal drip. And it usually kind of looked a little yellowy or a little greenish. Um, and so finally they realized that she had a fractured uh, molar kind of way in the back that they weren't able to see very well that was actually filling up a sinus cavity and that's what was draining out of her nose. So all of those things together make us really want to consider the condition of your horse's teeth, okay? And so in the bottom two images, <coughs> excuse me, um, like I mentioned earlier, your horse's teeth, sometimes they'll just run out of tooth, okay? So this horse has actually had some teeth break and some teeth literally just fall out. Um, but it's not a stretch to think that this horse would have a really hard time grabbing and grazing out in a pasture, okay? So that would really make us consider um, how can we feed this horse differently so he can still get the nutrition that he needs. So there are some other things that happen that we want to think about with regard to nutrition. Um, and that starts with changes in digestion and absorption. And so uh, what we think about... <coughs> excuse me, um, or what we really want to kind of keep in our mind is the fact that horses, when they usually reach about 18 to 20 years of age, there are some changes that occur um, with regard to how they're able to process and utilize nutrients within their digestive system. And so if you look in the image to the right, okay, we really think about the horse's GI tract and split it between the foregut and the hindgut. Okay, so the foregut usually is comprised of just the stomach and the small intestine, and then all of the associated organs that kind of play into those two. Um, and then the hindgut, this is our area where we have a lot of our um, fiber um, fermentation, excuse me. So our complex carbohydrates, or the things that we as humans don't really get a lot of use from our diet, Horses are able to ferment that by um, the benefit of the microbes that live in the hindgut, specifically within the cecum. And then they're able to get extra energy and extra nutrients from that um, cecal fermentation that allows them to be able to um, live a healthy lifestyle, okay? And so it's really important to remember that the horse from an evolutionary perspective is designed to eat forage as the major component of their diet. Okay, and ideally we're in that kind of 1% of body weight at a minimum, and we're hopefully hitting 2 to 2.5% two of that horse's body weight in forage per day. Okay, what we know is the fact that as these horses get older, they're not as efficient in digestion and absorption. And so typically what we do is we provide a little bit of extra nutrients in their diet to hopefully give them that extra boost or um, what we call increased substrate availability, okay, or increase the amount of particles that that horse has access to. And so often as nutritionists, we really caution owners not to overfeed if possible, but just meet your horse's needs, okay? So sometimes a lot of excess protein, for example, um, that can be really hard on your horse's kidneys to metabolize. So we want to provide them enough that they're able to get what they need, but not so much that it becomes too taxing for them, okay? The other is that as your horse gets older, we do see a, that gut motility slows down. And so what that means is that maybe the feed doesn't move through your horse as easily as it, it did in their earlier years. And so we want to make sure that we're providing them a diet that will move through the GI tract efficiently. Okay, so if you've got a horse that maybe has been prone to colic most of their life, um, it's not uncommon for us to see more colic bouts as they get older. Um, or for a horse that's never colicked, maybe now we might start to see some belly aches. And this isn't the case for every single horse, so it's not to say that as soon as your horse hits 18 years of age, all of a sudden they're going to start having colic. But it's something that we consider when we think about how to formulate a nutritional plan for your horses. Okay. <clears throat> and then outwardly, some of the things that you may see, right, a loss of muscle tone. 
And this is usually the one that gets people really excited when they think about a diet. Um, because they're seeing maybe that their horse's hindquarter isn't as full, or maybe their top line isn't as developed as it used to be, their neck isn't holding as much muscle. And unfortunately, even if we provide the best nutritional plan possible, some of this is just due to the fact that the horse is aging. Okay, very similar to people, right? It's really uncommon for us to see a person maybe in their 70s, 80s, or 90s in those later years of life um, that are really muscular looking. Okay, they're, they're kind of far and few between. So we do the best we can with nutrition and hope that we provide that horse enough um, to keep that muscle um, to the point that that horse is able to still get around and roll and move and do what it is that we would like them to do. Okay, two other things that really aren't too much of a concern for us on the nutritional side, but often that give people an indication that their horses are getting older. Um, obviously graying around the eyes, the muzzle and the forehead most notably. And then the appearance of a sway back. Um, so this is different than just a horse that's high withered, but actually has to do more with the degeneration of the ligaments that help to support the back. Okay, and this is a little bit different than what we would call lordosis. Okay, that's more of a condition that we see earlier in life where the horse will also develop a sway back, but kind of this older horse sway back appearance um, is pretty common. Okay, so when you think about all of the things that we just talked about, um, I want you to kind of go through and ask yourself these questions, okay? And I will tell you, and I'll use him as an example, my horse is a senior horse. Um, he is 29 this year, about to be 30. Um, and so a lot of these questions are ones that I've had to ask myself with figuring out what I should do with his diet, okay? And so the first question is that, <clears throat> is there something about the horse or your horse that's causing you to be concerned about their current diet? So this is not just, um, you know, oh, well, I think this is something that I need to be worried about. Is there something really that you've assessed or you've been able to notice that's a problem? So say, for example, maybe your horse starts to dramatically lose weight or gain weight. Um, that would be, the, you know, a red flag that we want to look at your horse's diet and what nutrients it's providing. Um, did you have a forage test, right? And you got that forage test back. We talked about that a couple um, webinars back about how to utilize that information. But are you concerned about maybe the nutrient quality of your forage and what that horse is eating is the major component of their diet? And then lastly, um, is there a recommendation from your veterinarian? So maybe through some blood work and some other diagnostics, your veterinarian has noted that maybe your older horse is having some issues with their kidneys or their pituitary gland, um, some liver function. All of those are things that we would wanna kind of make sure that we're balancing or, or really considering in the nutritional plan. So things like Cushing's disease, right? What we call pituitary intermediary, I'm sorry, pituitary pars intermediary dysfunction is known as Cushing's disease, right? Equine metabolic syndrome. And there's a variety of other conditions that we know um, horses can have and need to be managed throughout their older years. The next thing I want you to consider is, is your horse having trouble chewing, right? So here's that picture of um, quitting, okay? So if you're finding little kind of rolled up logs of forage that looks like this, that might be a cause for concern about your horse's teeth, okay? Are they dropping feed? Or maybe they're just not eating very much at all, um, especially if you're throwing them feed each day and you're kind of cognizant of how much they typically clean up. Are they cleaning up a little less than normal? Um, and the next question that kind of comes off of this is, could the problem be corrected by dental care, right? So your veterinarian could come out and maybe float your horse's molars, get those chewing surfaces to be nice and flat instead of pointy or correct maybe a wave mouth or some other issues. But even the best veterinarian can't fix missing teeth or maybe can't fix some, some jaw alignment problems that could have happened. Um, so we really wanna make sure that if your horse is having trouble chewing, that we take that into consideration when making nutritional recommendations, okay? And this last question, are you thinking of switching your feed only because of how old your horse is? And so there's kind of been this stigma, and I get questions about this all the time, about when is a good time to switch my horse to senior feed, okay? And, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, so my throat's a little dry. Um, the question that I get most frequently is, 
you know, well, my horses maybe turn 10 or my horses turn 15. Do I need to switch them to senior feed? Um, and I want you to think about that reference and just switching a feed just because of how old a horse is, okay, in relationship to human nutrition, because it seems to hit home a little better that way. So think about if you're sitting around with your relatives and your family, and we say all of a sudden that everyone in the room who's magically hit the age of, say, 65, they can no longer eat what they've been eating, and they can only drink and shore, okay? Essentially, we're basically making this arbitrary decision that at a certain age, the diet that was working and possibly working just fine now has to be changed for our horses. And it seems silly when we think about it with regard to people, but a lot of times horse owners do that to their horses fairly regularly, okay? So if the answer to this question is you're thinking about switching feed just because of how old your horse is, we probably don't need to do very much, if anything, to that nutritional plan just because you have a senior horse. But we're gonna talk a little bit about kind of keeping in mind your horse's body condition score. Okay, so looking at these six areas that are shown in this picture, uh, making sure that we're monitoring your senior horse. <coughs> because unfortunately, um, it can be really hard to put weight back on an older horse because of the fact that that digestive system isn't as efficient anymore. And we're already kind of battling maybe some lower intake as well. So as we move into now some feeding considerations, I want you to keep those ideas in the back of your mind, okay? Do I need to switch my horse's feed because of something I've noticed? Um, is there a problem with your horse's teeth? Or is it just because of age? So like I mentioned, we really don't change anything about how we feed horses forages with regard to what percentage of the diet they should make up. So we use the same recommendations Minimum of 1% of your horse's body weight on a dry matter basis. Um, again, this is the component that's just the nutrients, and we pull the moisture out and we, we balance rations. And ideally, we're at about 2 to 2.5% two of that horse's body weight per day um, on average, again, on a dry matter basis. And so we can meet this in a couple different ways, right? We know that we have pasture or hay. And again, if your horse is not having any issues with chewing, they can go out and they can graze in the pasture and eat it well, or they can eat their pile of hay. We probably don't need to change anything about the forage component of the diet. But if we're worried about um, if your horse can chew something or if we want to be able to really have a set number and know that that nutrition isn't varying like we would see with pasture throughout the course of the year, or even as a supplement, we might go to some processed forages. So we think of these as hay cubes or hay pellets, okay? So the, the kind of the middle two pictures here. Um, and these can be a really good, typically your kind of first step into the processed forages on cost side. Um, if possible, and if you're able to, I typically recommend a hay cube. Um, that particle size is a little bit bigger than it will be in a pellet. Um, and it kind of keeps the gut a little bit happier because there's a little bit more bulk to it. Um, especially when we think about horses moving into the winter and needing a little bit of extra water to make it through. Um, having a little bit of a bigger particle size in the hind gut for a cube over a pellet can actually help to keep your horses more hydrated. Um, in the top image here, we have a chopped hay. So usually you'll see these, they'll come in bags uh, or even kind of a compressed like shavings kind of block. <laughs> but most often, um, these hays are coated with a light layer of either oil or molasses to help reduce dust. So what this means is that often we see a little bit of a higher energy content in a chopped hay than we would in maybe a cubed or a um, pelleted ration. So again, if we're looking maybe to help bulk up a horse's diet um, that needs to put on some extra pounds, maybe a chopped hay could be a good dietary supplement. But it is important to remember, okay, that these are going to be more expensive than your baled hay. So again, there's really no need to worry about introducing them to the diet if your horse can eat regular pasture or regular hay just fine. Okay, we're thinking about this in regard to either a horse that maybe can't chew very well or one that we may need to supplement their diet a little bit extra. The next is forage replacers. So we have a variety of forage replacers that we've talked about um, in regard to uh, drought. Uh, management strategies and ways we can stretch our hay, but typically the one that we turn to the most for senior nutrition is beet pulp, 
okay? And so I've shown it to you here in um, kind of a loose form in this bottom image, but it can come in a pellet, it can come in cubes, um, and it can come kind of compounded with other feeds. Um, but most often, if it's just by itself, um, it will come either with or without molasses. So go with the without molasses option. Um, and research has shown that it can compose up to almost 55% of the diet without any complications. So we can use it as a pretty good supplement. Um, and what's great about bee pulp is it actually is considered a forage replacer. So it's got a lot of fibrous carbohydrates um, that that hindgut likes. But it actually is more energy dense than a lot of our hays. So again, it's a great option for our horses to be able to um, eat it in fairly large quantities and get a lot of extra calories in that are still pretty healthy for the gut. Um, <coughs> the next on here is a complete feed, and we're actually going to talk about it a lot on the next slide. But technically, a complete feed or even um, a senior feed, okay, is designed to really be able to supplement the forage component. So when we think about all of these pieces, okay, a lot of people ask me, especially for their seniors, do I soak the feed or do I not soak the feed? Um, and typically what I'll recommend is, again, if you've got a horse that has no issues chewing, their dentition is great, we don't need to worry about soaking any of the options that we've talked about. Um, if you have a horse that you are worried about their dentition, especially their ability to kind of grind that forage in their, um, the back of their mouth with their molars, I would recommend soaking and maybe even utilizing um, a cube as your major forage source. So that way as those cubes soak up and they kind of break apart, <coughs> your horse can kind of take them in and they're already at about the same size that they would have been if they were swallowed down into the horse's stomach naturally. Okay, same thing with your pellets. Um, if Again, we're worried about the horse chewing, soaking them and letting them break apart to the point that those pellets soak up the moisture, but we don't have kind of this pool of water just sitting in the bottom of the bucket is ideal. Um, with regard to soaking or not soaking beet pulp, um, if you've got a normal horse that has good dentition and you're not worried about um, a history of choke in the past, we can feed it um, soaked or unsoaked, there's not a problem. It won't cause colic if you feed it unsoaked. Um, but if I've got that horse again that can't chew, that's what I'm gonna recommend soaking it to give them something that they can kind of just mash up and swallow down. Okay, so now that we are gonna kind of assume that we've met that 2% of body weight on intake from forage, and we wanna supplement the horse's diet with some concentrates. So our rule here is no more than 0.75% of your horse's body weight, and this is as fed, not dry matter, so just the way you pull it out of the bag, per feeding. But the things for you to keep in mind, okay, are to avoid a sweet or a textured feed, okay? It could be either way labeled on the bag, but it'll probably look something like this, right? We're gonna be able to visibly see um, some grain that may or may not be processed, um, most of the commercial feeds that are available on the market now with a sweet feed or a texture feed have a pellet component, um, and then it's coated in molasses. And so typically we don't recommend this for our older horses for a variety of reasons, um, but that pelleted or the extruded feeds on these next two pictures here, okay, typically are what we're going to look for. Um, we've got more of that uniform component um, with a pellet or with the extruded feed little harder for our horses to kind of sift through. And typically we're able to actually get a higher fat content, specifically in our extruded feeds. Um, and this is really important. Again, we think about that inefficiency of the horse's diet um, or the horse's gut to be able to really take up those nutrients. Being able to have some extra calories in there um, with the extruded feed can be really helpful. So like I mentioned, the senior feed or the complete feed, these are typically sold kind of with the other concentrates. But it's really important for you to remember that senior feeds are designed to help keep um, the horse that can't chew properly, specifically forages properly, um, to give them a, a, an option in the, the concentrate realm. <coughs> and so what that means is that 
fiber content, okay, or how much um, of those complex carbohydrates are within that feed, the more fiber means less energy, okay? They're inversely related, kind of like a seesaw. When one goes up, the other goes down. And so most often what I see is that people have kind of, again, hit that miraculous age where they decide they want to switch to a senior feed and they kind of swap on a, a volume or a weight basis what they were feeding maybe in a performance or a maintenance ration with a senior ration. And because that senior ration is lower in energy, their horses start to lose weight, which is not what we want to do most of the time for our older horses. And so if we're feeding an equine senior or a complete feed, it's, it's very, very important that you feed it the way the tag tells you to, okay? Number one, and typically this is going to be a very high amount. So if you're feeding this as the major component of the diet for the horse that can't chew very well, um, I think the last bag I looked at from a, a, a readily available, very popular feed company recommended feeding their senior feed at between 20 to 25 pounds per day to the thousand pound horse. So that would mean that you're burning through a bag of horse feed almost every two days. So most people aren't feeding senior that way. And typically that's why we see some issues with our aged horses. So when we think about, and we'll talk about recommendations here in just a few minutes, but when we think about, okay, what do I do um, when I'm going into the store to look for something for my horse? It goes back to those questions. Is your horse having trouble chewing? And what are we looking for the diet to do? Do I want it to provide more energy to my horse? Do I need it to um, just kind of meet his maintenance needs? Or am I trying to get my horse to lose weight? If the question is gain weight, okay, higher fat feeds are really helpful here. And again, the extruded pellet uh, or down here, what that kind of looks like, you can almost see that it looks more oily. Um, typically, our extruded feeds are a little bit higher in fat. For our older horses, we'd also like protein content to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 14 percent. Um, not to say that some horses can't be maintained on a little bit less than that, but research has shown that about 12 percent um, really helps those older horses. Okay, and again, we have the same question here do we soak it or do we not soak it? Um, and it, it comes back to the same concept, right? How are their teeth? If I'm worried about them chewing it and I don't want them to just bolt their feed and swallow it whole, it's probably a good idea to soak it. <coughs> okay, so I want to give you an example here of the difference between senior and a maintenance or a performance feed. So these two are from, again, a very well-known company. And if you recognize the label, this is really just because um, this particular company does a great job of putting information online. Um, for their customers, so they're a good one to use as an example. But the 12.6 plus lysine, okay, this is more of our, their kind of performance um, ration, has 12% protein, so it would meet our kind of senior needs. Um, some added lysine, that <clears throat> uh, dietary essential amino acid, and it could be used for working or pregnant mares, okay, designed to be fed with a medium or high quality hay, and has 6% fats. So we've got some extra calories there as well. The senior tag right up, okay, tells you exactly what it should be used for. So formulated to address nutritional demands associated with equine aging. It's a complete feed, okay, designed to have adequate roughage built in that <clears throat> to address issues horses have with chewing or digesting forages, okay? So the label is telling you exactly the type of horse that you should be feeding this to. And if we look at the nutritional component of the feed tag, okay, <clears throat> we've got our 12% protein in the performance feed and 14% in the senior. But now let's look at fat. Okay, 6% in the performance and only 4% in the senior. So we know that fat is the most energy dense component of the diet. So as we cut it down in the senior, we've already lost some calories here. Okay, the next option here, crew fiber. All right, so we're at 12.5% for the performance feed and 18.5% on the senior. All right, that's a big difference. And again, what we just talked about, right? The more fiber we have, the less energy is in the feed. All right, it's not to say that fiber is not important, but we know that the horse has to eat more of it to be able to meet its energy needs throughout the day. <coughs> if you go across the rest of the minerals that are listed here, okay, they're almost identical. Um, and these parts per million that you're looking at, 
all right, as we move up and we feed these horses more of it, again, the way it's designed to be fed, we're not worried about meeting that horse's dietary needs per day. So overall, okay, utilize this information to be able to make good considerations about what it is that you're purchasing. All right, if I've got a thin horse and I'm worried about getting weight into them and their teeth are, or, I'm sorry, calories in and their teeth are good, okay, I'm probably going to go with the 12-6 lysine. Um, and even if their teeth aren't maybe that great, um, but they still have the ability to chew a little bit and they're, they're really struggling to keep on weight, maybe purchasing this performance feed and soaking it might be a better choice than trying to get that horse to eat pounds and pounds of senior per day. Okay, so if we assume that now we've gone through our concentrates, okay, and we still need some extra calories, now we might be able to top dress with some oil and be able to put some additional calories to that diet. So if you're thinking about starting this, all right, start with a quarter of a cup of oil per feeding, and you can work your way up to about one to two cups per feeding, depending on your horse's body weight. So typically what we recommend is that the higher end here is about three and a half ounces of oil for every 220 pounds of your horse's body weight per day. All right, and remember your, your kitchen math here, eight ounces of oil is equal to one cup. And every cup of oil is about two megacalories, depending on what you're feeding. So we really have a, a very efficient way of getting a lot of extra calories into the diet by just supplementing with fat if we need to. Um, and we obviously don't want this to be the major component of your horse's diet. But again, as a supplement on top of good forage and a, a commercially available concentrate is a really good idea um, if your horse is having issues with weight maintenance. And so types you can use, corn and canola oil are really readily accessible. Um, you can find them, you know, at Walmart, local food store, Costco, Sam's Club, wherever it is that you shop. Um, and we're really able to, to get a lot of calories in in a cost-effective manner. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit different, um, flaxseed or linseed oil are also pretty popular and available um, at least a little bit cheaper than some of the other um, trending kind of ideas like fish oils and things like that. All right, <coughs> so everybody always wants to talk about vitamins and minerals for their older horses. And so really when we think and we balance in that horse's ration, okay, vitamin and mineral content needs are met if not exceeded most of the time by pasture, forage, and your commercial concentrate when fed appropriately. All right, and typically um, when your horse is eating a good balanced diet, their hindgut and all those microbes in there actually make vitamin B and vitamin K. So we don't worry about those two either. Um, they actually make some vitamin C, but your horse's liver also does that. So really when we think about what your horse is needing, we want to consider what's in the diet first. And so if for some reason we've got some um, deficiencies, especially in minerals, we want to add that into the concentrate specifically. Um, you can always put a salt block out, and it's a good idea to have one in your pasture, but we don't want to assume that your horse is able to walk up there and lick on that salt block to the point that they can get their mineral intake. And so uh, if you don't take anything else away from this, okay, remember this. Horses can't regulate their, their mineral intake on their own, so there's no innate mechanism that allows your horse to say, you know, mm, I think I need some calcium today and walk over to that salt block and lick enough to get the, that calcium intake. Okay, it doesn't happen that way. So we wanna make sure that the diet provides what your horse needs. And really consult your veterinarian here. So there definitely are some instances with different diseases or different conditions where supplementing a vitamin or an additional mineral could be very helpful. Um, but this should come at the directive from your veterinarian and then work with a nutritionist that needed to figure out how to get that into the horse's diet. And this last piece on our, our feeding recommendation side, okay, are supplements. So there are loads of supplements out there for you to utilize, and we talked about some of these myths um, in a previous webinar, but remember to use supplements with caution, okay? So there's no magical supplement out there that's designed for the senior horse to just fix all of the senior horse problems. And it shouldn't take the place of a good nutritional program. So again, consult your vet and a nutritionist to figure out if maybe there's a way to help your horse stay more comfortable, if their joints hurt or things like that, um, with regard to <clears throat> utilizing a product maybe that they would recommend or that they have access to over and over-the-counter supplement. Okay, 
So now let's take all of these things that we've just talked about and think about them in different scenarios. So when we're making recommendations, <coughs> excuse me, let's use the first scenario, right? I have a senior horse, maybe he's 20 or 25. They're doing well on the current diet, right? Their body condition score is appropriate, maybe a, a five or a six on that one to nine scale. And they don't have any other health problems that we're worried about. They're just kind of older, okay? The recommendation here is just to leave the diet as it is. Obviously, the horse is doing well, okay? There's no changes really needed um, to be able to let that horse still be healthy, okay? Uh, scenario two um, is a little bit different, right? So my horse still has good teeth, but maybe they're losing weight. So this is probably the the time or the example where most people that I talk to switch to equine senior. Okay, when they see that their horse is losing weight, they'll change to that diet. And again, it has less calories often than a lot of our comparable other maintenance pellets or maintenance feeds. And so really the opposite needs to happen. Instead of us decreasing calories by switching to a senior feed, we want to increase calories. So we can still switch feeds, but we're going to have to feed a lot more of that senior feed. Okay. So what I would recommend is increasing the forage content if you're able to. So maybe if that horse is inside eating hay, throw them some extra flakes during the day. Um, or feeding a little bit more of the concentrate that they're on, adding an additional meal or adding a little bit more to each meal, maybe morning or afternoon or maybe even um, in the evening. The other is that we may be able to switch to a more highly digestible concentrate, so one that the horse can utilize more efficiently, um, or add maybe a beet pulp, um, kind of a snack, if you will, um, or alfalfa cubes or something that we know is a little bit higher in energy, um, but maybe is not gonna kind of tip the scale on the um, concentrate sides if we're not able to stay within that 0.75% of the horse's body weight. Okay, and then our last option is to top dress with oil. So if everything else is balanced and the horse still looks good, we're meeting protein needs and minerals are okay, now we just need some extra calories. So oil could be a good use here. All right, and this is where, um, like I said, I have my older horse. This is kind of where he falls. So winter is really tough for him. So he kind of tends to drop off in weight, um, kind of starting in that late November, early December. And he struggles a little bit through February. So what I tend to do is about maybe mid-June, really start putting a lot of feed to him and make sure that he goes into winter, maybe even a little fatter than he usually should be. So he's got an extra buffer to lose some weight during the winter. Okay. Um, and again, <clears throat> this was a horse that characteristically was a pretty easy keeper in most of his younger years. But now as a senior has transitioned to be a little bit more of a harder keeper. So I need to manage him differently. All right. Scenario three, now we've got the senior horse that has some poor teeth and they can't be fixed. So whether the veterinarian um, <coughs> has noticed some issues, maybe they've lost some teeth, and this horse may or may not be losing body condition, okay? But because of that horse's teeth, we want to switch to an easily chewed forage um, and meet that horse's intake needs for the forage side to keep the gut healthy and allow them to utilize all of those nutrients within the diet. Okay, so we go to a chopped or maybe a cubed hay, some beet pulp supplement. We're probably going to soak it as well um, and maybe even add in the complete feed at, at the appropriate rate to meet that horse's nutritional needs per day. Okay, and soaking again for this horse is really important. All right, in our last scenario here, the horse may have a variety of health issues. So there was a horse um, group that we had worked with just a few days ago where the horse actually had um, kidney failure. Okay, so balancing for protein content was really the major focus of that diet. So finding an option that allowed that horse to be able to eat um, their, their recommended forage amounts but not go way over on protein was a little bit more challenging, okay? Um, especially if you've got maybe a horse that you know is really prone to laminitis, okay? And we're trying to cut back on calories but we still wanna make sure that that horse meets their nutritional needs. Um, some of these can be a little bit um, more of an issue to work with. So sometimes, and for some conditions, senior feeds may not be the best. Um, so for the example I just talked about, that horse and kidney failure, 
Um, senior feeds typically have a higher protein content than a lot of others on the market. And so if I'm worried about kind of overfeeding protein, a feed with higher protein isn't my best choice. So really visit with your veterinarian and a nutritionist if you're able to, um, if you're dealing with a senior horse that has a variety of other health issues. Okay, so this is my senior horse. I threw a picture of him in there um, and my daughter, but like I said, he's 29 in this picture and still doing well, but he eats more feed than I ever thought possible when I first got him. Um, so if you have any questions at this time, I'm, I'll gladly um, answer them for you. I hope that was helpful and I put my contact information up there for you as well in the event you need it.